We have here the uh, the bridge that connects the north side of Missoula, which is there, to the main part of town. We're just immediately adjacent to downtown here. For many, many years, that north side was was uh, kind of separated from town by these railroad tracks, and residents sort of were in the habit of just walking across the track. And some years ago, the railroad decided they didn't want people walking across the tracks for liability reasons and so on. And the alternative is an undercrossing, a sidewalk that goes under the tracks. It's kind of a long, dark, uncomfortable tunnel. And the residents got organized, worked with the railroad to have an at-grade crossing, which, as it turned out, never worked out at all. Uh, but the process generated a lot of Northside resident interest in having an effective way to get from the north side over to here. Um, the result was that when the city of Missoula finally came into a pretty big pot of CMAC money, the idea of some kind of an overcrossing was an eligible project for the CMAC uh, funds, and particularly because it reduces a substantial amount of motor vehicle traffic driving from over there to here. This particular location, John, we've got, uh, it's just inconvenient that we've got such a, a, a good facility at the river to cross that major barrier, but to get there you have to cross this very nasty intersection with an oblique angle, we've got a horizontal and vertical curve, high volume of traffic, the geometry of this intersection is such that there is not a convenient way for pedestrians to get across it. It's, just, it's one of those things that we, we simply can't figure out how are you going to make it good for pedestrians and good for motor vehicle traffic both. You know, how do you approach that issue on any kind of project like this one that involves a high level of public trust, that the, tr the public is going to use and respect the expensive amenities that are provided for them? That's, that's a great it's, question. It's, it's, it's a problem, and, I, and I, think, I think one of the things you have to do is, is create places that are nice enough that people will want to preserve them, mm -hmm. that they feel it's valuable. And, and once you start doing that, you know, it may take a little while for that to trickle down and you know, for the teenagers and the other folks that uh, you know, get drunk on Saturday night and want to <clears throat> go create havoc. Uh, one of the reasons that we do these kind of facilities is that we think people like to be connected. You know, they don't have to go way out of town. They like to be connected to the parts that make up their community. And, and a bridge like this makes it possible for people to be connected. Folks that live just behind that store over there, and they've got some friends that live over here. Before the bridge was here, they couldn't be in touch with each other without going a very long way, and they had to have an adult drive them. Now it's easy to be connected, not only to people, but to places. Just One of our, our real serious issues of conflict in Missoula with these wonderful trails we got are bicyclists that aren't particularly respectful of other trail users. And so I guess to the extent people would pay attention, I'd really ask when you're riding a bike on the trail to realize that the pedestrians maybe don't know you're there so go slowly when you're approaching them, especially from behind. Holler something out like bicycle coming up or something similar to that. If you've got a bell, ring it. Make some kind of noise and then go around them slowly. A lot of pedestrians, even though they may look real agile, aren't. And it sometimes is real uncomfortable for them uh, to have bikes pass. So uh, just improving trail, trail courtesy, I guess. Uh, bicycles can bicycle riders can do a lot to, to kind of help out with that.